Virgo. This is your April love reading. So this is for anyone who is Virgo sun, moon, rising, and then it's also if you're interested in a Virgo and you're kind of like, what's going on with your love life this month? Um, hoping that they're going to hook up with your sun sign. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to start with the challenges that you might face in your love life for single Virgos this month. Um, and it's interesting because I have the Empress here, okay? And so it's a challenge to like really feel your best, to feel your sexiest, to have confidence. Because the Empress, when you look at her, um, she's so confident. You know, sometimes they depict her as like the mother, you know. Um, she's a very fertile person. But um, of all the queens in the deck, she's the only one who has her legs slightly open. Um, so she's very, you know, A, it's because she's pregnant, but B, it's because she's very sexually alluring and appealing to other people. I mean, look at her dress in this deck even. Like her breasts are definitely highlighted. So she's very magnet, um, very magnetic. Like people are just attracted to her. They're drawn to her. They really put her on a pedestal. And so you have to remember tarot is not gender specific, but um, this magnetism that's kind of your challenge to really like go out there with confidence to meet new people and things like that. Now what it's saying um, with the Six of Swords next to it is that some of you have not entirely mentally walked away yet from a past relationship. So maybe you're just becoming single and you're like scared to get out there because you're still thinking about somebody else or maybe you're even worried like that somebody's gonna see you out and tell your ex, something like that is going on for some of you Virgos. Now it's a general reading, so obviously take the pieces that apply to you and leave the rest. Um, I personally would watch my moon sign before I'd watch my sun sign just because that's our emotion. Some people watch their Venus sign, um, but take from them you know, whatever really clicks for you and that's the message for you. You know, when it's not a personal reading, um, sometimes things will kind of be all over the place or maybe um, you're watching this right when it comes out in the beginning of April and then halfway through the month, something, you come back and you watch it again and something that didn't click before, all of a sudden, boom, it clicks because it hadn't yet happened. So um, that's really what I'm seeing though, is that it's a challenge to build up our own confidence. Um, but what it's saying here with the judgment card is that that confidence is um, really kind of like a mindset actually for you um, this month anyway that you can go out there and just say like look I am amazing and I'm here and I'm open to meeting new people and that will be your truth it's actually a decision um, so that's interesting because you know sometimes different things happen um, that kind of like dampen our own um, energy field, like astrologically, things like that. But this isn't the case this month. It's kind of a mindset. So you totally have control over that. And so with the King of Pentacles here, um, it says with this one, you know, you can still be serious. You can still be um, focused and responsible, but at the same time, let loose and have a little fun. And you can see that he's actually got his leg crossed like this. Like, he's like, okay, you know what? Like, pentacles, like earth signs, totally serious a lot of the time, but I'm, look at me, I'm casual. Like, okay, so that's what's going on here with the king of pentacles. You can be both simultaneously the empress, you know, who's like a little bit wild and um, just fun loving, but also responsible at the same time. And if you put that energy out, if you are able to meet that challenge, you're more likely to draw in a partner is what this is saying um, for the month of April. Now, um, where are you right now this month? Um, the Queen of Wands and the Page of Swords. So some of you have already stepped into this Empress type of energy, um, even though it's challenging, um, because the Queen of Wands isn't that different. She knows what she wants, and she goes after it, and she gets it. So um, this month is a very good month for you to make the first move, for you to start conversations with others. Um, you know, you could potentially miss out on somebody by not starting a conversation with them if you're waiting for them to come to you. Um, some of you are afraid of uh, being rejected, but this month in particular, things are more likely to go in your favor. So if you're going to try it one month, April's a good month for that. You know, if you're typically reserved and you sit back and you wait for someone to approach you, 
this month is actually a better, um, has a better success rate than others for you to start the conversation. Now, um, with the Seven of Cups, some of you just are maybe not doing that because you're confused about what it is that you actually want. Some of you are a little bit stressed and you're feeling spread too thin. And so you're wondering, like, do I have time to date? Um, like, my work is important. My family is important. You know, this is important. That's important. And so some of you are just kind of like in a haze, like in a funk, just kind of wondering, like, is this even worth my effort and my time? Um, what it's saying is, though, like, emotionally, you can balance it all. Um so if you if it is something that you decide that you want, this is a good time for you. This is a really positive omen too to have the Two of Pentacles next to the Temperance card because the Two of Pentacles is like typically not in this deck, but in decks that have more humans on them. It's a fellow and he's kind of balancing his Pentacles and he's like, oh crap, one's gonna fall. Oh crap, one's gonna fall. And he's like this. Um, and he's scared that he's going to drop it. And it's like screwing with his emotions a little bit because he's really worried. He doesn't want to drop them. It's important to him that he doesn't. He's so responsible. But um, he doesn't actually drop them. Okay? He d manages it, he balances it all out. He has these moments of panic, but he's okay. He's got it under control. And they say that you can do that here as well. Like your emotions are going to be just fine as well. You can both balance um, a new romance, talking to new people, um, starting dating if you haven't been, all of these things. You can balance that out this month of April in your life. And emotionally, it'll be really good for you. So um, what is your advice this month in love? Whoa, <laughs> this is try new things. Try the untraditional. So whatever you've been trying to um, attract a mate, try something different. If you've only been, you know, like at home writing lists of the things you want using law of attraction, just waiting for them to show up, it's like this month, okay, keep doing that, you know what? But this month, actually go out and co-create. <laughs> like, um, if you always go to the same places, try to go somewhere new. If um, you don't talk to people when you're in the grocery store line, this is the time to do it. Try something new because you could definitely find someone this month. Other advice is that, um, so a couple of things here. It's They're reassuring you saying that it's not more work than you can stand. Like if you meet somebody that you kind of click with um, or getting out there in the first place, you can, you can bear it. You think that you can't, you think you can't balance those pentacles, but you can, you have time for it this month. If you make the time, the other thing is that, um, some of you are maybe putting people to the side or not considering them based on their financial status. And I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but, um, some of you are like, oh, well, you know, maybe I don't like your job or maybe, you know, like you don't have enough money. Like we have big income disparity or maybe I can't date you because you make way more money than me or something like that. But you have to remember that things like pentacles, um, even though they represent stability and, um, you know, like our day to day lives, those things are temporary. They're not. Um, you could be a millionaire one day and be broke the next or be broke one day, be a millionaire the next, like things happen. And so that's not a reason it's saying, um, to discount anyone. Okay. Um, at least not this month, not this one, D do it in May, but not in April. It's saying, uh, that some of you also, you already kind of know what you're thinking, what you want to do. It's just about taking the actions, taking the steps. So I'd very much encourage you this month to do that. Now, one thing I want to do because the energies have been really hard on a lot of signs for um, this Venus retrograde we're going through, a lot of old wounds coming back to surface, um, even exes coming back into our lives, learning the same lessons over and over and over, and oftentimes they're painful. So... Um, I want to pull a card from this deck just to see what lesson we're kind of coming out of, what we've been learning during this uh, retrograde, and then also what we can expect um, our souls to kind of be working on in April. So joy is the one that we've been learning, okay? And it says, 
You delight in the love of life and bring a spirit of fun to all that you do. And so it's interesting that this is the one that pops up because we had the Empress as your challenge. So your challenge to find more joy in the day to day, your challenge to find more joy in everything that you do to be that really magnetic, fun person. That's been your challenge. Um, and then now the lesson that we're learning all the way through April is forgiveness. And it says, you're now able to activate the power of love in order to release past hurts. And so this is perfect timing for this one to show up because that Venus retrograde ends um, April 15th, I think. And oftentimes those energies can spill over a few days or weeks. And so this is not only about forgiving people from our past. This is about forgiving ourselves as well. And um, for a lot of us, that's been the hard thing, forgiving ourselves for staying in relationships that weren't working for us, forgiving ourselves for not valuing ourselves enough um, to really go after what we want, right? So those are the lessons that you can expect. I hope you found this reading helpful, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks so much for watching my video. Check out terriblyaccurate.com for a personal reading. Follow on Snapchat, like on Facebook.